Recently, Daniel and his wife, Steph, were hunting during the antlers only firearm season here in Missouri, trying to take some does. And they watched a, a doe come in the field and a pretty good buck was nudging around. Steph made a great shot and took the doe. Y'all have seen that episode most likely. I want to replay that slowly. Do you notice anything about the doe or her behavior? Notice the buck still pursuing the doe, nudging her around. She urinates and the buck comes up and smells it. Seems pretty common, right? I don't see anything abnormal in her behavior or the buck's behavior following her and smelling the urine spot. Do you? If you do, leave a comment below. Tell us what you see. Now, as a standard protocol, here at the Proving Grounds, we have every deer tested for CWD, chronic wasting disease. Missouri Department of Conservation does a great job of making that available free for hunters that want to have their deer tested. So we were eviscerating a deer, dressing a deer. We take a sample, pull lymph nodes out of the throat, put them in a baggie, and we save up three or four or whatever and get them to the Department of Conservation. And you know, a couple weeks later or so, those results are available online. Last year, I harvested a buck that had CWD, and when we watched that footage, I didn't notice anything different about him. He looked like he's a little ran down from the rut, but he was cruising, trying to pick up another doe. I took the shot. It was, you know, a pretty long shot, so I couldn't see details of his body, but his behavior looked normal, and he tested positive for CWD. And like that buck, the doe's death shot also tested positive for CWD. This is one of the worst things about this horrific disease. Deer look absolutely normal and they incubate or carry the disease to prion, the causative agent, for 18 to 24 months. And they look absolutely normal, except for about the last month when they start wasting away. They actually, it's a spongiform disease and the family of spongiform diseases and start getting little holes in the brain. It looks like Swiss cheese through a very powerful microscope and they start acting silly and wasting away. They can't function. Oftentimes predators kill them and consume them before a hunter finds a dead deer laying in the timber. I knew as soon as I mentioned CWD there'd be a lot of naysayers and poo-pooers and all that stuff. But I just want to take some time, here we are right in the heart of deer season, and talk about some common points and maybe some misconceptions about CWD. We often get phone calls or emails during the late summer saying, man, there must be CWD in my area. I found some dead deer around a pond. Well, there is a big difference between EHD, epizootic hemorrhagic disease. Some people call that blue tongue. They're separate viruses that look the same. And CWD, chronic waste disease. EHD, usually several deer in an area, if it's a bad outbreak, will die within a month or so, a pretty short time frame. They get a really high fever, and that's why they're found by water. And you find several deer, and that's why some people say EHD is way worse than CWD. That's absolutely incorrect. EHD can kill in outbreaks a lot of deer, but even when I was in grad school and decades before then, scientists were studying EHD, and forever, as far as we know, deer herds bounce back from EHD. Oftentimes, some of the biggest bucks killed in big buck places like southern Iowa are killed three, four, five years after an EHD outbreak because it knocks the deer herd down, the population down, and there's way more groceries, less social stress, etc. And you grow some of the biggest bucks because of that big die-off or a big harvest, if you will, after EHD. It doesn't stay in the landscape, it doesn't just keep growing. Chronic wasting disease, CWD, is more insidious. It can kill deer any day out of the year. It can kill them when it's snowing, it can kill them when it's hot. And it takes a couple years, again, as I mentioned earlier, for that to mature in the deer. These prions are multiplying and causing bad things in the nervous system of the deer. Now I'm talking at 30,000 feet again. I don't want to get way down on deep science. And so, it's been shown, especially out west with mule deer and elk and other species, mountain lions can detect that this deer is a little weaker than the rest of the herd before human eyes can probably detect it and harvest a lot or kill, predate upon these CWD infected deer. Hunters don't know that. They're not finding a bunch of dead bodies on the ground. EHD deer 
are full of infection. A lot of times when they've happened here at the Proving Grounds, the only thing that eats an EHD deer might be a turkey vulture. But coyotes and their stuff tend to ignore EHD killed deer so hunters find them because they're so full of infection and somehow they sense that. CWD deer, apparently that's not the case and you don't find a bunch of deer laying on the ground. Another huge difference is EHD is spread deer to deer by biting little bitty flies called midges and it goes deer to deer through that vector. CWD is when deer get this causative agent, a prion, which is a bent or malformed protein in their body and it multiplies. Especially bad or bait sites or mineral sites, I know, hold your hat folks, I'm just, I'm just telling the truth here, I'm just telling what science knows to date. And when one deer salivates, urinates, defecates, and they could put those prions on the ground, it's different in a big area like walking around here behind me or the little circle at a feed or bait site. They can be really concentrated. And that's proven by research, people taking samples and looking for those. That's not just a theory. This is scientifically published information. So it can get in the soil. The causative agent, the prion, can get in the soil and then it can be taken up by a plant or the deer lick the soil there or something and it can continue going. And that's why the numbers tend to build over time. The prevalence rate, the percent of deer in an area that have it, starts increasing if big actions are taking. And of course, deer disperse, so the area starts getting bigger and bigger. And we've seen this in Wisconsin, and Arkansas, and Tennessee, and you know, Colorado, Western Kansas, over and over and over. There are no doubts about this. This is solid, 100% accurate information. I mentioned about baiting. Baiting is illegal in Missouri during deer season. I'm in a CWD unit, so it's illegal year round. And we look in the rumen of every deer we harvest. We call that scouting from the skin and shed. We want, are they eating acorns, white oak acorns, red oak acorns, or eating native vegetation food plots? Unfortunately, when we looked in the rumen or the stomach of the doe Steph harvested, that later tested positive for CWD, she had a bunch of corn in her. <laughs> one of my neighbors was baiting. It's just that simple. I don't know which one. I got a lot of neighbors, but uh, somebody was baiting and we're in a CWD zone. Please don't do that because again, you're really encouraging deer to urinate, salivate, and defecate in a small area. And then there's that old argument, well, baiting's no different than food plots. If that's true, why do all you hunters hunt over a bait pile? Don't you think it's more effective? If baiting is no different than a food plot or an acorn tree, I hear that, well, baiting is no different than a white oak tree, then why go to the hassle of buying high dollar corn these days? Why don't you find you a white oak tree or plant your little food plot? But anyway, we're in a CWD unit and I don't want CWD to spread even more. And so doing things that causes deer to be nose to nose or licking the same place some other deer just urinated, defecated, or salivated is a really bad thing. Now, deer are going to groom they're gonna use scrapes. They're going to touch where other deer have touched. Absolutely true. That doesn't mean we wanna make that additive. We don't wanna add another reason and super amplified. You know, again, if deer use scrapes as much as a bait pile, why would you mess with putting a bait pile out? Just find the scrape. So, this is just common sense stuff, folks. It's science back, but just common sense. Growing deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, PH Outdoors, Moultrie Mobile, Steel, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, Fourth Arrow, Soil Pro Outdoors, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Burris Optics, G5 Broadheads, Prime Bows, and Redneck Hunting Blinds. We process every deer and Daniel and Jamie and you know interns and some of the editors and certainly my family consume the venison harvested here at the Proving Grounds. None goes to waste. We give some away, but quite candidly, we consume, I'm gonna say 80 or 90% of it. And we harvest a lot of deer. We have every deer tested. You may be wondering what happened to the venison we processed from the deer Steph harvested. Well, we process every deer because we don't have the results yet. But we label each deer on every individual package, a burger, loin, you know, deer one, two, three, four, whatever, keep records, and we put those in a separate part of our freezer until we get the test results back. Those are not put on the side 
that is for anyone that wants to consume, those are not yet until we get the test results back. And if you're in an area that CWD is known to exist, I encourage you to adapt a similar process. But I'm going to say, this is an estimate, the bulk of deer with CWD are probably not tested and consumed of harvested deer. The bulk of deer that are harvested that have CBD are probably never tested and consumed. For years, almost no state was testing. CWD has been known to be on landscape for 60 plus years and maybe much longer, we don't know. Think of all the deer, and this has been studied. Again, I'm only talking today of you know, refereed serious publication research, not Joe Bubba said down at the barbershop. So in Northern Colorado, CWD has been known a long time. Forever it wasn't tested, about 75% of the deer and elk harvested there are by residents. And they harvest critters not just for hunting, but for meat, right? Elk's a lot of meat. Big mule deer's a lot of meat. And studies have been done to see if people in that area have any more nerve-based illness, illnesses that could possibly come from eating CWD deer versus the rest of the United States population. There was no difference. There's never been a known case of a human contacting CWD or a like disease, a similar disease, from consuming a deer that had CWD. Never. There's been rumors and articles and headlines. Never. Period. That's a blessing. A huge blessing. But CWD is 100% fatal. Period. Do you want to be the first guinea pig on that one? I certainly don't want my family or my staff being part of that, so we're going to have every deer tested first for our own consumption, our own feeling of good. We want to be really, you know, happy about the venison we're consuming. It's super healthy meat. And B, we want to help the state of Missouri and the nation as a whole learn more about this horrible disease, where it's spreading, how it's spreading. And you know, for years I preached doe harvest. Well, we probably amped that up a little bit harvesting more does, so there's just less nose-to-nose -nose contact out there. This makes sense. And Illinois and Missouri have been doing this forever, and they've kept the prevalence rate and distribution at lower rates than states that haven't practiced this. Testing is probably the best way individual hunters, besides keeping deer herds down and not using a tract and split deer nose-to-nose, -nose, is to help all hunters nationwide, and I mentioned this earlier, is to learn more about disease how it's spreading, the distribution, what's happening. There is no cure yet, but I'm very hopeful. I believe fully that the more we learn, there's better chances of someone, probably not from the wildlife profession, from a medical profession or a deep molecular research profession that can bring a cure for this disease. Understanding disease and possibly finding a cure is one part of the battle then you have to be able to administer that cure. And sometimes in wildlife situations, you use a bait with the medicine in it. Long ago, I've told you before, I worked for the BLM, the Bureau of Land Management out of Elko, Nevada. And we, domestic sheep, were given wild sheep up the mountain some diseases, and we would put that medication in applesauce, take it up the mountain in the helicopter, and that's how we vaccinated wild sheep. But these were isolated, wild sheep populations where we're trying to restock them in certain mountain ranges in Nevada. It's been a very successful program. There are millions upon millions of white-tailed deer. Most people estimate about 30 plus million currently in the United States. <laughs> I would not want the job of deciding how to inoculate or vaccinate all of those deer. This is not the most happy subject to talk about, but I think it's one that's very important and I want all hunters to come together unite let's do what's best for the resource let's stop bickering among each other let's talk about what's known which is probably not much of the circle and help those researchers to fill out that circle so we can learn more and take the best actions to me white-tailed deer are a very important part of enjoying creation a lot of y'all know this my oldest daughter's named raleigh that's Ode English for Dweller by the Deer Meadow. My youngest daughter is Ray, R-A-E, which is Hebrew for Doe. Deer have a huge impact on my life, and I want to do what's best for deer. 
and I encourage you all to do the same. I think learning about deer in good times and bad is a great way to enjoy creation. And just like I want us to learn more about deer, deer behavior, food plots, native vegetation, and unfortunately wildlife diseases, even more important than that is to learn more about our Creator and His will for our lives. And I encourage you to have quiet time every day and seek Him and His will for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer.